all righty what is going on ladies and gents welcome back to the channel for another market update hope everybody's having a lovely day and with that being said let's get into the ta oh yeah baby let's get it all right guys so i'm gonna start this video off by saying guys we still have that bull structure there's no reason to be bearish on these charts all right you could be neutral all right but i'm gonna tell you what i'm gonna be i'm gonna be bullish until proven otherwise because we continuously have that bull structure stepping up. Now, I am going to start off with the fact that here on the hourly time frame, you do have this bearish divergence going on. It is a thing. It is a warning sign. You also have that on the daily time frame. All right, we continue to edge out these divergences. Guys, at some point, these will play out. I just don't think they're yet. I think we're going to come up here, and I think we're going to tap 435 over here on QQQ. I think we're going to come up here. And tap 500 over here on SPY. We're two dollars away. I see no reason why price is not going to push another half percent up to 500 bucks. All right, that was my target that I put on the board this morning when we got our gap up. All right, just come over here. What are we talking about this morning? Gap up into resistance this morning. And price opens up underneath these supply zones. Expect sellers to step in there for a pullback. The fact that Spy and QQ got up there tells us to be bullish on the pullback. Things can change to bearish, but this is why I've been saying that the charts are suggesting bullish price action. So until proven otherwise, be bullish. I do think Spy will break out to new high, and then we realistically could see the $500 psych level. QQ would be breaking out of a $5 range on this breakout. Could take it up another $5 to 435. We'll be watching for divergences to form. Should have, uh, or for a divergence to form. We look to be getting a fresh breakout today. So we should be bullish until those divergences start popping up. IWM looks great. It backtested that falling wedge and now has room up to 195.74. Speaking of IWM, let's talk about the little beast going on over there. All right, guys, so you literally broke out, you back-tested, you got two of them going on here. And I'm just saying you are continuously making these higher highs over here. You also do have this uptrend to be paying attention to. So that is something I'm seeing here on the hourly time frame. Between this touch point, this touch point, and this one all the way down there. And then you hit control and you drag. And what do we have? We have a uh, ascending channel slash bear flag. All right, so that is something to be noted. All right. I'm just putting it out there. But as of right now, you're still making those higher highs and higher lows. But you kind of have an equivalent highs up here with higher uh, higher lows. So things are getting tight up there. Um, but I'm just going to say overall, this is a bullish chart. You literally found buyers sitting at the point set, literally right at the 0.786 fib. That is the line in the sand. All right. And at the same time, you bounced up and you had this bullish falling wedge. You then broke out. You retested it. You find buyers again at this demand zone here. You flipped it back to being demand. And then, uh, yeah, guys, I'm just saying this chart looks bullish. I don't know what you want me to say. On the daily time frame, you literally got a hammer candlestick today. It doesn't look bad. You come over here to SPY because you got a big fat green gap up here. I understand there is a gap left open below, but it does not have to fill immediately. And I would caution against just going blindly in here and just shorting. I would heavily ca and caution against that, all right? I'm actually going to talk about it right now. NVIDIA, I would heavily blindly, I would heavily uh, suggest, I would, I'm a heavy advocate for nobody jumping in front of this train, all right? I've been saying it for a very long time now. I literally said you should not... <laughs> I said I think it was a very terrible idea on this exact hammer candlestick to be shorting the beast. Why? Because you were at support putting in a hammer candlestick, and I thought you were going to get squoze. You end up getting really squoze, and you never came back down. And I'm just going to point out, I don't think it's coming down for a long time. I don't know how high this thing's going. I have absolutely no idea. There is an $800 price target that got put on the board the other day that caused this breakout. Um, I think it was $800, $850. Guess what? I'm not saying it's going up to 800, but I don't think it's pulling back anytime soon. We can get a massive pullback here, a $200 pullback, and the dip shall be bought, and we're probably seeing a new high. We're probably not seeing a $200 pullback, guys. It's been like a very long time now. It's been two thirds of a year, and the most downside you've seen is this move right here. That is a $90 move down. We did not see anything past 90 bucks, guys. All of these other pullbacks are less than that $90 move down. And it came back, like, this is a perfect setup. Do I wish I took the... 
Actually, I think I did take this setup back in the day. All right. Do I wish I just, you know, continued riding this bad boy up? Yeah, I definitely do. All right. Um, yeah, I'm just putting it out there, guys. Don't short the freaking beast. Let's talk about this. These are my three scenarios. And you can see these derived. These levels are coming from the hourly time frame right there. All right. Really, these are the three scenarios. And they're all bullish. Why? Because I'm bullish. We are bullish until proven otherwise. The price action is not telling us to be neutral or bearish. It's telling us to be bullish. That is that. That is why I'm not neutral. I am bullish. Guess what? You can pull back all the way down here and it would be a $60 move, almost a 10% move down, and it still will just backtest the previous high here. I don't think there's anything bearish about this. All right, even if you get that $90 move down, which I'm just saying, it's a, this candlestick is suggesting we go higher tomorrow. Let's say you do go higher. All right, but let's actually say right here, okay? Because even if you get that $90 pullback, the biggest pullback you got in the past two-thirds of a year, which keep in mind, that's actually the biggest pullback you've gotten in, uh, yeah, 482 days. That's a year and a half. NVIDIA has not pulled back more than it did right over here. So assuming that it's not going to have a massive pullback that it hasn't seen before, like in the last year and a half, we're going to assume that this zone right here will hold. What zone do we speak of? We're talking like right here, okay? In between here and here. No, this is not a demand zone. This is just where I'm saying, I do think if price were to test down here, this is your bear case scenario. You get down here. Then guess what? You buy the crap out of that thing. I'm not telling anyone to do that. I'm going to say I'm probably going to take my shot. Well, not probably. I will take my shot right here if I see it. Because, um, yeah, you guys can see what I'm saying. I think I'm making it very clear what I'm saying. Okay? Now, let's finish talking over here on the indices. I'm going to come over here to SPY. I'm going to point out here, 15-minute time frame. Break and retest right there. You had this flag. You broke out from the flag. Now you're breaking and retesting off of where you were finding sellers before. All right, guys. You do have the bearish diverge going on here on the 15-minute time frame. That is definitely a thing. All right. That is your first warning sign popping up. All right. As of right here, this push above this high, it was created with the divergence. That is not a good look. That does mean we have to be cautious now. The last one that formed literally put in a major top. Well, not a major top, but here in, in terms of this time frame, yeah, major top. Not on the daily time frame, which is where I should be referring to those major tops and bottoms as. All right, but a $6 sell, guys. That was $6. Imagine selling down $6. People would lose their shit. They'd be like, oh, I told you, I told you. I'm going to say, nope, nope, you didn't tell me. I'm just going to buy this dip. All right, that, that would be how that goes. Because if you did get your $6 sell, you'd be coming right down into, <laughs> into the golden pocket. That's that. And that is why I say, until proven otherwise, we're bullish. I don't even care if it pulls back. We're bullish. I'll show you guys what to continuously watch for. We've been, you know, we've been watching things. And you guys, listen, we were looking for the sell off of open. I was looking for the sell. Was also, I was looking for price to actually come that down here and back test this. That's what I really wanted to see. Um, regardless, the fact that you got up here told you to be bullish on this pullback, I'm still going to say we just broke out. Guys, there was a $5 range. We're probably going to at least go another two or three bucks up here and come tap 435 over here on QQQ. So short-term target, 435, buy 500, all right? And people are probably going to take their big old short at 500, and maybe you see some sells, all right? Maybe it's a little sell. But here's like realistically how I see this going. Oh, I'm a genius. I'm a genius. This is the shorts. I'm a genius. I'm a genius. And then it squeezes them. All right. Like realistically speaking, this is kind of how I expect this to go. If you reach this $500 psych level, people are going to pull the triggers on shorts. They're going to have tight stops. They're probably going to, you know, we're going to see that pullback. And people are going to probably short some more. And then they're going to create the fuel for the next move up. All right, that's what I'm looking for over here on SPY and QQQ on IWM. As of right now, guys, you break above this high, you do have room all the way up here into this supply zone, which the top of it is 195.74. But I'm just putting it out there. If you break down from this uptrend, watch this zone right here from 192.39 all the way down to 191.53. 
all right? These levels don't have to be exact, all right? These are just my levels. You can, you know, just draw your zone down here if you'd like. There you go. And if you get under there, guys, we're going to be watching this 0.786 Feb. If you break under 190, IWM is screwed, baby. All right, let's talk about some individual tickers. Number one, Carvana. Why are we talking about Carvana again? I want to bring this up. All right. We're literally just going to bring this up. Guys, these are all the last breakouts that we have seen. And we can go back further. They keep, you know, looking crazy. They really do continuously look absolutely just nutty. This is on the daily time frame. All right. Maybe we get some consolidation, but this thing looks nutty. It looks absolutely phenomenal to me. We literally got the break and retest today off of your double bottom breakout. This is what I'm talking about, baby. I like it. All right. I like the stock. I think we have a, I think we just, I, I'm still going to stick with what I was saying in yesterday's video. I think we just started this move up. All right. So here, what I did, I took the last one, two, three, three breakouts. And we went from the close of that breakout candlestick and we went the next day. You did have a 20% day here, 20% day here, coming from the close right there and coming to the high. All right. And then, you know, guys, I was looking for this. It didn't come today. We did get a hammer candlestick of consolidation. And we got that consolidation off the of floor volume. That is what you want to see. I don't think this looks bad at all. I think this is just getting warmed up. I think if you take a look on this weekly time frame, I think you're going to see exactly what I'm seeing. All right. Now, I mentioned this in yesterday's video, and I don't know why I've completely brain farted and forgot about it. But here, now we're showing it. All right. So let's delete all this clutter here. Go like that. And now you guys can clearly see what I'm looking at right here. Your neckline is pretty flipping clear here. You come here, you draw your zone. It's so crystal clear, guys. It's so crystal clear. If it can break above here and get a weekly close, Carvana is going to go insane. I'm just putting it out there. It's going to do one of these things. It's seen higher prices. We know there used to be capital that was willing to pay these prices. I'm willing to bet that if you do get that weekly close, I think capital is going to be chasing this thing. Just put it on your radar. All right. So I do think Carvana warrants a longer term swing because of the chart that I just showed you. And I'm actually going to show you something even sexier. You know what I was just talking about? How that bullish structure is telling us to be bullish until proven otherwise. Guess what? You literally have an inverse head and shoulder right here as the right shoulder on this massive inverse head and shoulders. You guys really want me to make this picture clear for you? I gotcha. There you go. There's your head. That's a shoulder. That's a shoulder. Left shoulder. Head. Right shoulder. Oh, you want some more? You want me to make it even more clear? I got you. I got you. Don't you don't you worry, guys. I always got you. Boom. What do we got going on here? We have an absolute sexy weekly chart, monthly chart, daily chart. And I think this close above this downtrend right here, I think that was your swing signal. All right. For that longer term swing that I do believe this chart is warranting. Just putting it on your radar. Okay, I'm looking for 50 to 53 bucks in the upcoming trading sessions. And yeah, that's that. Next one is RK. You did get your breakout today. You were coming in for the retest. That is something I would like to take note of. Not going to say I like the fact that you had declining volume today, but I like that you literally closed on the retest level. Or like, you know, on the on the uh, downtrend you just broke. I really like that. I don't like this volume. Now, that also brings me over to the next setup I want to talk about, which is you. All right, guys. You over here just broke out. You had a false breakout over here. All right. And where are we getting this trend on here? Touch point, touch point, touch point, touch point, touch point, touch point, touch point. Got very freaking tight, guys. Golden Pocket is sitting right underneath. We don't even need to look at it. 
point of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, you are at break and retesting where you broke out from all those months ago. We're talking two to three months ago. Three months ago. You broke out from right over here. Well, actually, that was two months ago. Yeah. Two months ago, you broke out from this consolidation over here. You did have this inverse head and shoulders going on. This was your neckline. You're back testing that. You're literally doing that right now as we speak. You came down to it in a slow and controlled manner, which suggests we don't have aggressive selling going on. We don't have panic selling going on. This is controlled selling. They're looking like they want to bring this up to the next leg. I'm just letting y'all know. Okay? Put it on your radar. You just got the breakout. It's fresh. What I don't like about the setup is that you had declining volume on this breakout candlestick, and it turned into a doji of indecision. It's not what we wanted to see, baby. It's not what we wanted to see. But I did want to see the breakout. All right? We're looking for that follow-through. I'm looking for a break above this high right here at 33.43. If it can, I think it could get moving and grooving up into these TP levels right there. All right, but I am just going to tell you. The thing isn't showing that it's like strong right now, all right? I'm just putting it on your radar because we got the breakout. You don't have volume. We don't, I want to see positions get taken. That's really what I want to see, all right? Um, it doesn't need to be the case, but you can see, guess what? Big green candlestick. Big volume. Breakout candlestick, small volume. I don't like it. All right? I would like to see positions being taken. I would like to see volume flow into the stock. A perfect example of this is Carvana. You had amazing volume yesterday. We haven't had volume like this, okay, since actually the high over here, all right? But uh, I am going to say this is the highest volume since you come all the way back over here when we had a lot of shares tra uh, changing hands here. This is where people really wanted Carvana. We're starting to see volume tick back up. What if this day is just like this day right here? Now, I understand we didn't get no 20% day today. I understand. I would have loved for that to happen. But we didn't. Um, I am saying it's still, it's still loading. It's sitting right there. We've, we've been here before. It's just loading. Next one we're going to discuss, AMD. I want to point out, you are literally just consolidating above the previous highs. Definitely something to keep your eye on, considering you have... What is the ticker? What is the ticker? ARM. ARM has a 30% gap up in the after hours. The thing went insane. Premiums reduced. So, you know, it's not like insane money was to be made here. But, you guys could see what I'm getting at. Alright, we have a chip stock. We have other chip stocks. This chip stock has been doing nothing as these chip stocks have pushing have been pushing to new highs. I think AMD is consolidating before it pushes up to new highs. There you have it. TLTR. All right, guys. All short-term targets hit. I'm looking for consolidation above 2312. What is the significance of 2312? All right. Well, not 2312 specifically, but 23 bucks. All right. I didn't mean to say 12. Uh, we're just going to make that a $23 psych level. Uh, oh, no, we're not. We're going to make it $23.10. We'll just keep it like, right, yeah, right there. All right, you guys could see what I'm seeing. It was from right there. You broke down from it. You broke and retested that level, and then you died from there. All right, so very important spot we're at here, and I just want to say congratulations for whoever stayed strong with this setup. Congrats, your freaking relations. All your patience was worth it. This is exactly why we've been talking about Palantir. This whole time, it was in consolidation, all right? Now, granted, we did talk about it before it had these big moves. I understand some of these had some time. Like, it took time, all right? Like, right here, it took some time. Right here, it didn't take time. You ended up seeing a decent move right there, all right? But then you had this. And this is where the huge congratulations comes in. Your contracts definitely went in the money if you were playing them down here. I hope, listen, guys, if you're buying contracts right here and you're buying them this far out the money, please do not be doing that. You have no reason to. Your contract should definitely be going into the money. All right. So, congratulations. But this is the larger picture I'm seeing. And by the way, anybody who was telling me I was getting too emotional with PLTR, just know. I see things with my eyes, and I do things. And I will let you guys know about those things. 
But please don't tell me I'm sitting there getting emotional. No, if I see a move loading and I'm trying to catch a move, please just let me, you know, try and catch the move. That is that. It was being caught with profits. And that is that. So guess what? In the end, who was the emotional one? The one who sold their positions before the big move? Or the one who caught the big move? I don't know. All right, but congrats if you caught the big move. I'm looking at this massive cup and handle. I want consolidation in between 27 and 23 over the coming weeks. And that will prepare for the next move. All right, that's what we're watching there. Baba. Coming down into the golden pocket. You were finding buyers there to start off the day. Let's take it off extended hours. All right, you were finding buyers down here in the golden pocket to start off the day. Now you're just consolidating. I don't know where it goes from here. All right, you did have a miss on earnings. Well, it wasn't a miss on earnings, but you, well, it was a miss on earnings, actually, if I'm remembering correctly. But there was bad news in that earnings, so there was that. Um, yes, so the, you can see that killed the short-term momentum. You did come back within the channel. I did tell you I was bullish on this pullback. All right. Either going to find buyers here in this golden pocket. Or we're going to do something like this. You're going to come down here. And we're going to look to buy this. And this is where I'm actually going to set my alert. Right. Here. 71 to 50. All right. Next one we're talking about. BA. All right. BA. Similar to, uh, what was the one we looked at that was uh, breaking and retesting earlier? ARC? Yeah, ARC. All right, so ARK already hit it with the break and retest from this downtrend. Guess what? BA is doing the same exact thing. You closed right here on the retest of your downtrend. And you're actually, and this is the top trend line of this pennant. It's looking pretty good, guys. It is looking good. You could break above to 14.57. I'm just putting it out there. I think this thing flies. I really do. Why? Because you have a low, you have a high, you have a higher low, you will have a higher high. That is something that hasn't happened in a while. Even right here when you had the higher low compared to over here. You bust it up. You still couldn't, you know, you're looking for a full-on reversal move. This is the thing that I think is going to bring that full-on reversal move. You couldn't get it over here. I think the chart is setting up for it. I really do. Came down here and you found buyers at the golden pocket. Why are they going to hold the golden pocket if they don't want 100% retracement? Why are we going to come to right here at 214 and not have the 100% retracement at 214.57? I think you're coming 214.63. I've been talking about the damn wrong level. Are you kidding me? Are you crazy? Damn. Look at that. That's okay. 214.63, that is a level we're watching. I can't believe I've been talking about the wrong level for this long. Next one, and the last one we're talking about, is over here on Oxy, guys. I'm watching for a trend line break. Until you get this trend line break, you don't have a reason to be bullish, all right? But I want to put out, this is a higher low compared to over here, and it happened to have formed right here in the golden pocket, which is something we love to see. Then you came up, you found seller sitting at the trend line, Got rejection. Now you look to be consolidating. And honestly, what I think is a bullish manner. Like it looks like you're about to be pushing up. And you do have these two big fat doji candlesticks off of decreasing volume. Guys, it is preparing for the next move. It's going to be up or down. My guess is going to be up. Come over here. The daily time frame. All right. Or not the daily time frame. I just wanted to point out the RSI, guys. You had this bullish diverge sitting down there. You never really saw a full on move. You really just did it. So I do have to assume that we're going to be seeing this thing break to the upside. If it breaks down, it breaks down. But baby, I'm watching for that trend line break. And once that trend line breaks, we are watching for the above levels. And that is that. With that being said, I will catch y'all in the next one. If you would like to come trade with me and, you know, be in the community, come check out that community. Link is below. And with that being said, appreciate you guys. I know we got new people. I appreciate everybody who's new here as well. Um, welcome to the community. Welcome aboard. And with that being said, I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.